What's up, what's up, what's up? This is your boy Lake Dawson on Lake Dawson Morning Show here in New York City, baby. Right now it's 8.44 a.m. on a Saturday morning. It's 67 degrees out. I want to say hello to everybody in the world from New York City all the way to England, all right? We got some friends out in Australia right now. We got some friends out in Alaska right now. North, South Pole, what you doing? What it's looking like? Everybody's cool. California's chilling as always. Where that, where that be at? Anyway, I want to say what's up to everybody in Seattle, everybody in Arizona that we know that we met on a conference. Hope y'all doing well out there. And I want to give you guys some heads up. My boy Late Shit, I messed up. My boy Danny Bailey the Third is here. Good morning. Good morning. And nobody in this world is perfect, right? So whatever. All right. Hopefully no kids is watching. You know. Anyway. So um, Daniel's gonna ask me a few questions. We're gonna go through this little interview. Uh, that way you guys get a get a background on me and you know all this all this great stuff. You know what I'm saying? All right. Anyway, then you go ahead and show them show show them what you got, baby. Sure. So I just wanna get things started, uh, asking a basic question. Out of all career choices that you could have made, why real estate? Yeah, maybe we'll, uh, try to even it out. You know what I'm cool. saying? Why real estate? Because I love real estate, baby. Real estate is the is the is the, the, the what's the called the base of this world. You understand everything? Foundation. Yeah, this is right. Base foundation. <laughs> it is the reason why you know the United States is is keeping afloat. You know, and the world in in, in general. So I, I and some people don't know, but I went studied to be a stockbroker on Wall Street, 14 Wall Street, love that place. I was able to meet Jim Cramer. He's he's an awesome guy. And I, I was able to meet several uh, mentors of mine who were doing really well who, who were doing really well in um, in finances. And they taught me the ropes about finance and I studied the systems in finance and I learned uh, studying the series seven that hey guess what? Really is a part of this whole thing baby monetary consumption monetary divide the the balance of everything in life but the thing is most people don't know that most people don't understand why Wall Street is so important to the financial aspect of this world they just think okay you got stockbrokers who trade in different companies and that's that no that goes around the entire world that's why it's important and that's why people sit there and they watch all the time but I love real estate. I used to, as a kid, I used to watch HGTV uh, with my mom and a lot of like different renovation shows, uh, husband and wife shows um, that would take a space that that was a um, what's it called uh, that needed repairs, a fixer upper that needed repairs. They would uh, repair it, and then the next thing you know, it would look like a brand new home. You know, a multi-million dollar home, and then they would sell it for a reasonable price. So, okay. So, how old were you that you made that decision that real estate is going to be your life? Well, real estate is not my life. Well, your interest. My life is my life. My interest uh, when I got out of college. So after this was after. I had gotten out of college. I did my internship at Disney World. I did my in, um, I did my apprenticeship at uh, Fordham Financial on Wall Street. And then after that, realizing that real estate was that important, and I loved real estate as a whole, I went ahead to study to get my uh, to get my real estate light license. But there's one part I'm missing. I also worked at another financial company in Long Island that I had a mentor named Sherman Niemer. He was from overseas. He taught me the ropes about what had, what went on overseas, and he taught me about sales and business as a whole with a higher gross and monetary consumption. And what I mean by that is these folks in the company were making about $125,000 a month. A month. Now, look, this is no joke. These guys were making one, two, five a month. Mm. Yeah, and I had never seen that before, ever. You know, even with my mentors in college, they were making two hundred, three hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, and these guys were making one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars per month. Multiply that by twelve. That's a lot, right? 
and uh, a lot of them had homes in the United States and out, out of the country as well. Okay, so they showed me the ropes. They showed me what it was that I needed to do to grow my business as a whole. And now I'm giving back to you, baby. So anyway, after all of that, I went ahead and I started studying under the Robert Kiyosaki Rich Dad Education Program about investing. I met several investors who uh, explained to me the system in terms of like the type of pre uh, properties to purchase, uh, what banks al allow um, throughout a period of time, and it go and then also uh, explains how family family wealth worked, and on top of that, uh, explain how how to deal with uh, lawyers and lawsuits that will happen eventually in your uh, term as a real estate investor. Cool. So, and then I went and got my real estate license so that I could combine the two because I noticed that there was a, a barrier. There was a line between agent and broke and, and um, investor. And a lot of times the agents don't know the investor aspect of, of real estate. And I think that it's important to have both uh, experiences in order to be in real estate as a whole yeah okay now what you learn in real estate did you apply that to any other industry what do you mean like as far as you know what you've learned in the real estate world like how to reach out to clients you mean yeah like the you mean like the uh, sales right. sales aspect of it yeah of course Okay. Yeah, you know, you that's like the main. Everybody's a salesperson, even if they don't think so. You know. What do you mean? You got to sell yourself to get a job. You know, you have to sell yourself to get an apartment nowadays. You have to sell yourself to buy a home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just your resume is different, right? So your job, you have a regular resume. If you're an actor, you have a resume with the um, with the jobs that you've done in in that field. Um, when it comes to purchasing a property, your resume is your financial background, you know? Um, so when you're buying or renting, excuse me, when you're renting a home, they also look at your financials, they look at your history, you know? So it's, you, you definitely, in all aspects, you're selling yourself regardless, whether you like selling or you don't like selling. I don't know how people not like selling because, shoot, selling gives you the money. Mm. You know, there's people out there that need your, that need your service. But you set you set yourself back because of fear, and fear is at in this at this point in time in this world, man. Fear is is seems to be a bigger word than what it actually is. It's almost like having a pen and then like a schizophrenic thinking that the pen is alive and like running around crazy when it's still just a just a pen. You know, fear is just a word. You understand? Faith is just a word, but it's the act of force in the fear and the faith that you use to bring out the things that happen into your life so you know that's that's why spiritually they talk about it faith is a must to see you know they talk about faith and fear in general and how you know david and goliath how um david didn't have fear he had faith and through that faith and energy he you know he took out goliath same thing with these other wars zeus and you know in the Greek mythologies and you know and the Napoleon's story and the, the Haitian story about winning the war and you know all of that stuff it comes back to faith and fear man if everybody in this world took the time out just to look at those two things and focused on faith and listened to the visualization listen to the thoughts in the mind once you focus on that then everything in this world would be be amazing so that was deep i'm a deep man is there uh is there anything that you would have done differently as far as the way you started oh is, yeah okay. i mean even though even though i don't think like if i if with everything that went on in my life up until now mm -hmm. um I appreciate it because now I, I know that this is what I need to do. This is where I'm at, you know, and all of that stuff. But if I if I knew in college that I had the ability to become a stockbroker without having to go to college, I would have just gone from high school to become a stockbroker. Right. You know, and I think my focal point, even though I had to pay $300 at the time to take the test and all of that 
that stuff. Mm-hmm. But um, not only that, but if I would have known everything I know now about real estate in college, I would have purchased that $24,000 home right. that was down the block from the school. Mm-hmm. You understand? I would have gone and did the calculations, the after repair values and all of that stuff to, um, and found out the return on investment on that property and I would have gone and renovated it and then I would have put some people who were at school into the into the property, right. you know, contingent upon their finances and whatnot. And then I would have I would have been making a significant amount of money while just focusing on school instead of having to work two jobs. You know, two and three jobs at a time. I could have focused just on my studies, and um, and then at the same time, if I had more than one property, I could have leveraged the first property, got got another property, did the same renovation, put somebody else in it, and you know, went down the line, did it up to four four properties. You know, however many units it was going to be, and I could have had a zero balance on my uh, what's it called, my school loans. Right. You know, I could have made enough money to where I had money in my pocket and I had money for school loans to pay off the school loans while I was in school. So you would have had a surplus pretty much. Right. Because every month, I mean, every quarter or whatever, I forgot how they do it every six months or or whatever, but Mm -hmm. there was a balance due on the account. And if and if that did occur where I had all those properties, I could have just been taking care of balances every six months every six months taking care of balances and then once i got out of school which was i was in school for like five years once i got out of school i wouldn't have had a balance at all or if i did have a balance left over it would have been from the from that last semester and i would have been able to take care of it not only that i could have stayed in north carolina mm. i didn't have to come back at that point right. because i had enough money to where i could have gotten my own place because they had the new properties over there right. that were 850 a month at the time, we thought that was a lot of money because we didn't have any money at all to right. really work with. But I could have had that. I could have had those properties in my portfolio. My finances would have been great. My credit would have been awesome. And then they would have moved me in there, which was like down a block from the school. I would have um, used the prop- the money for the properties to pay my rent. And I would have still had money left over for me to, to, to live, you know. And at the time, I had there was a girl that I was interested in who um, who was just just started attending the school and and I told her that I was going back to New York so and it just stay. I right I could have stayed there right. and she was she was talking about you know you know if I would have gotten an apartment and all of that stuff then you know but yeah. it didn't happen that way that's why I always say knowledge is key man knowledge is power for real so read as much as you pot read at least like three books a day, man. Like that's what I do. Like that's why I do book of the days, man. And I and how I and I know some people ask, well, how do you have time to go to work and read that much? Guess what? I have, I have an old that too. I get up at four forty five AM. You know, I, I didn't always get up at four forty five, but once I learned the process, learned that I could maximize my time here on this earth. I said, let me get up a little early. I don't need that much sleep. I as long as I go to sleep by ten o'clock, eleven o'clock, that's enough time for me to get enough rest and then wake back up, you right. know, and be good to go. You know, but I listen to audio books. It's the same thing as picking up a book and reading it. And when I have really have my off time or something like that, then I'll get a hard cover book and I'll sit down by the beach or by the pool, you know, and I'll and I'll read a little bit, you know while I'm relaxing but if I'm mo- if I'm multitasking I'm doing a lot of stuff I'll I'll go ahead and put on that audio book or that YouTube channel with the YouTube red that doesn't have any commercials and then I listen to it you know and go through that process so during this interview and the way that you speak it exudes a lot of passion so what advice would you give other individuals same age, younger, older, that wants to get into real estate, what encouraging words do you have for them? I mean, you already delved into it, getting up early and audio books, but just a little push to those that need it. You know, we all can use a little encouragement. It's a little, little nudge. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, first of all, you know, even if I sit here and I try to encourage somebody to do something that I'm doing, I'm going to tell you right now, 
that's not going to be enough, man. You need to have that fire inside of you to want to get up every single day and like grow and like change people's lives and all of that stuff, especially in real estate, man. Real estate is not real estate is a lion amongst itself. And then when you're dealing with people who have more money than you do, you, you're going to fall flat on your ASS. Mm. I can say ass flat on your ass. ass. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, a couple times, this, you're going to be in a ring with Mike, with Mike Tyson's, mm. you know what I mean? Where they, they're going to knock you, they're going to knock you out. Wow. I want to say the whole thing, but right, I'm right, right, say, right. excuse my French, you know, Paul Vu Francais. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but, but you know what? As long as you get up and keep going, you'll be all right. There's been plenty of times where I got knocked down. I thought there was going to deal. There was going to be a deal. Prime example. There was. I had just got gotten out of the hospital, and I was I was sick for like a whole week. I'm not going to go into detail, but faith is a must to see move mountains. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, um, I started back. I started doing real estate again in terms of being an agent. And I was showing properties and I was able to get a couple people into the Lenox Terrace, which is in Harlem. I was able to get a couple people into the Amco building on 70, 73rd Street, um, 240 West 73rd, if I'm not mistaken, uh, right across the street from AMDA. I was able to um, do a lot of things. But then there was this one person that I, I went uh, far and wide to find a place for and I found a place in Riverdale for her and we looked at three different places but this one was within a budget and it was a brand new building and whatnot so you know everything went through I told her my fee and all of that stuff and she was supposed to pay me in total um, five thousand dollars that she said she was a doctor you know, I didn't question it, and I told her I was reasonable. So I told her, I said, hey, if you got to let me know, if you're not able to pay my fee, let me know, and we can negotiate uh, terms. You know, I do that with all my clients, right? Mm -hmm. So she said, no, okay, it's fine. You know, she filled out the application, gave the $100 application fee to the management office of the building, and from there, it was supposed to be, okay, you know, we'll come back. We'll look at the prop, the apartment. They'll after they do the credit check and all of that stuff. So they did the credit check. She was good to go. But then a week later, she said she wasn't feeling well. Then three days later, she wasn't feeling well. Then next thing you know, she didn't even want the apartment. Wow. You know, so she wasted a hundred dollars. Number one, and she wasted my time. You know, and I I was looking forward to that five thousand dollars that I was supposed to get. You know, um, and it, and that happens in as a real estate agent that happens. So I, I it was a real big blow to me because I put a lot of energy out to help this woman, and she didn't even have the decency to like just be honest, you know, with me. So I just you know from then on like I I learned, it was a learning situation. I learned, I learned, I learned, I learned, I learned, and I met a couple of, uh, of other folks that that did me well, man. Um, it was this one one older lady who was putting her daughter in um in, in in the Amco building because she was starting school in the area, and Olga, that's her name, Miss Peterson, um, from New from Pennsylvania, um, and they were all an awesome family, man, awesome, awesome, awesome family. And she was a good negotiator. She she had owned properties in in, in uh, Philadelphia, and her and her sister owned several properties. So she she was in the game for a while. But she loved my work ethic. She loved all the properties that I was showing her daughter and her and whatnot. And I was willing to show two, three, four days in a row. Like here we go. And next thing you know, we got to the contract signing, and she she put up the paper. She was like, I want to work with you again. Mm. And she called me again. You know, so, but in terms of the investment aspect of real estate, it just, it, that's something that I love to do. I love renovating properties, getting that negative energy out of, the, out of the space, putting in the positive energy, and then moving a family in that really needed the space, that probably that lived in a lower income class neighborhood that, um, whose kids were in a, um, uh, in the that needed a decent um, school district to move into. Um, and and we found a place, we renovated, and now they're there. You know what I mean? Right. 
So that's the key. Sometimes I do flips too where I renovate and I sell it to a family that, you know, that needs it. You know, we don't overdo it. All right, man. Well, it's a lot of information, I know. Yeah. That's good. That's what they need. Uh, I don't have any other questions, but okay. I appreciate you having me on your show. Well, and you know. Mi casa es su casa. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe next time we talk about some food or something, we'll... We'll like put it up to the screen, like grilled cheese or something like that. Bet I hold you to it, man. Yeah, well, I didn't say you was eating. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, man. So that's gonna be our show for the day. Um, it was glad you guys showed up in HD, baby. And uh, you want to say have a good day, and we'll see you soon. Peace. Peace.